and welcome to Around the Clock. I'm your host, Yolanda Greaves. We are speaking with Jennifer Wolfing, the Director of Human Services at the Ashland Community Center. Jennifer, welcome back to Around the Clock. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Yolanda. Uh, we are here at the food pantry. Mm -hmm. It's the time of year when people don't think about the food pantry. Um, so what are you seeing right now here at the food pantry? Um, well, we live in a very generous community. I'm so lucky to be here in Ashland. Um, we um, have a surplus typically in the, around the holidays with donations and people wanting to do food drives. Um, we do. We are very lucky that we still have food drives being done this time of year, but the donations definitely drop um, this time of year. We have um, pretty regular donation food drives from the National Honor Society, from Simple Gestures. Um, we have an upcoming food drive uh, facilitated by the Boy Scouts, and also Corderville Realty is doing one in March as well. Um, but certainly the donations do drop this time of year. People are less likely to think to donate. Um, but our numbers are our numbers are still pretty high. Um, you know, I think our number last month was 75 families. Right. And, and when you say 75 families, are those couples, are those families with kids or is it a big range? It's a range. It's a range. I do have the stats um, That's okay. in the other room. <laughs> I can get them, but yeah, it's a range. Um, what, if you, you know, standing here, there's, you know, there's obviously still a fair amount of food. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest need right now that you think? for families? Uh, Ashland trash bags are always a big need. Those are rather expensive. Yep. Um, so, um, and we have, we tend to get a surplus of pastas and um, macaroni and cheese and canned goods. Um, but we don't, things that people don't think to donate are um, toiletry items like mm. shampoos, conditioners, um, things things that folks can't buy with food stamps. You can't buy feminine hygiene products with food stamps. You can't oh, buy wow. Um, like toilet paper and paper towels and, you know, cleaning supplies are a big need to, you know, toothpaste, um, shampoo, conditioner, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we do get donations for feminine hygiene products through Dignity Matters. Mm -hmm. That's a community partner of ours. Yeah. Um, so we, we do have a fair amount of that, but stuff that people don't really think to donate. Um, and there is a spectrum of food insecurity and, um, you know, some folks call us because they need assistance with a little bit of everything. Yeah. And some folks can get their basic needs met, but not always. Um, but that's it, you know. Yeah. Um, and then some folks, um, they need help getting, like I said, the things that, that food stamps don't cover. Right. Or maybe at the end of the month when when um, their budget doesn't allow uh, and the food pantry is a supplement. Wow. Wow. Um, so your role as Director of Human Services, what does that mean? Remind our viewers oh, what, what that is. Sure, sure. So Human Services is an all-encompassing resident assistance department here to support any resident of any age and any, any socioeconomic status, be it vulnerable, middle income, or affluent, helping to navigate through any social, emotional, environmental, or mental health stressor. Um, so often that means to connect them with the appropriate ongoing resource. So we are kind of a one-stop, like, Tell me, tell me how, how you can help tell me. Tell me what's wrong and how I can help you. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and then we can um, help facilitate that connection with our various community partners. Um, so for example, if somebody calls and they're struggling with food insecurity, I might assist them or someone in my department might assist them with a food stamps application and connect them to the food pantry um, and then see what else is going on. So who, how many people are you managing? How many people are working with you in the human services department? There's three of us right now. We have um, Rosalind Rubin, who likes to be called Roz. Um, she's uh, coordinating the food pantry. Um, she is available Mondays and Thursdays from 8 to 4, and then Wednesdays from 10 to 6. Um, that's a little change in our food pantry hours, you know, making it more accessible into the yeah, evening. Yeah, certainly following other departments in town that work a little bit later on a Wednesday. Yep, absolutely. Nice. And great. then um, Courtney Laughlin is um, is the uh, is the case manager that works uh, for me. Um, she is also a social worker. Um, she's an LCSW. Um, we're, we're very lucky to have both of them. Nice, nice. So you were just saying you've been here... Almost five years. Almost five years. Mm -hmm. Wow. What changes have you seen within the community, either more needs, less needs, within those five years? Well, um, 
I think our capacity has increased in, in the past five years, uh, um, you know, being that we are, the structure has changed to an all-encompassing mm -hmm. human services department rather than um, just youth and family. Um, we are still very connected with the senior center, with their elder outreach department, and we collaborate often. Um, I think with I mean, the easy answer is COVID. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> COVID has really, um, I think any any issue that was just kind of below the surface before March of 2020 has risen to the surface for most people. And, um, you know, our, our volume has significantly <laughs> increased in the last right. few years. Right. Are you seeing it lightening at all? I mean, people keep saying, oh, we're almost out of it. We're almost out of it. It's as you said, it'll be it'll be two years next month. I mean, I think this was the it was the time two years ago that we started seeing and people talking about COVID. Are you seeing any kind of light at the end of the tunnel in regards to needs in the community? Um, yeah, I mean, I hope so. That's my <laughs> hope. I mean, I know that our food pantry numbers have stabilized a bit. Mm -hmm. I know right like maybe like, you know, March to March of 2020 to June of 2020, our numbers were really, really high. We right. were serving almost, almost, you know, 50 to 80 families a week wow. um, at that, those months. Right. So our numbers, numbers have certainly stabilized since then. Um, um, yeah, my hope is that there is a light at the end of the yeah. tunnel. Yeah, good, good. Well, Jennifer, thank you for taking the time to talk to us and sharing with, with us what's going on currently in the food pantry. Uh, be on the lookout for those drives that are coming up. And if you have some donations you'd like to give, you can bring them here to the food pantry. And we're in the basement of the community center or the senior center, depending on who you're talking to <laughs> is what it's called. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Great. Jennifer, thank you so much for coming back to Around the Clock. Oh, thank you for having me. And we'll be back with more. <laughs>